Did you know that the story of Satan actually begins as a courtroom drama? Not in the fiery pits of hell, but in the starlit courts of heaven? Hey everyone, welcome back to our channel. If you're new here, I'm Jose, and I'm thrilled to dive into today's fascinating topic with you. In this video, we're going to explore the origin of Satan, a figure that has intrigued and terrified humanity for centuries. By the end of our journey today, you'll have a better understanding of how Satan has been perceived across different cultures and times. And stay tuned, because I'll also be sharing a little-known fact about the evolution of Satan's image that might just surprise you. So, where did the concept of Satan actually begin? The figure we often think of today has undergone a remarkable transformation from its earliest origins. Firstly, let's consider the name Satan and go back to the very roots of the Satan narrative, and it's far different from the fiery image that may come to mind. In the earliest texts, the term Satan was not a proper name, but a title, derived from the Hebrew word for adversary or accuser. Imagine a celestial court where beings debate the fate of humanity. This Satan served as a sort of divine prosecutor, operating under God's jurisdiction. It's a role that's more bureaucratic than diabolical, tasked with testing the integrity of people's faith. This role is well illustrated in the story of Job, where the Satan challenges Job's righteousness, leading to the calamitous tests of his faith. But even here, he is acting with permission, not as a renegade spirit. The story is less about cosmic warfare and more about moral examination. As the concept evolved, particularly during the post-exilic period when the Israelites returned from Babylon, the adversarial role began to morph into something more personal and sinister. Cultural exchanges with Zoroastrianism, which featured a clear dichotomy between good and evil, likely influenced this shift. By the time we reach the intertestamental period, writings outside the Hebrew Bible begin to ascribe to Satan a more rebellious and malignant nature. Texts like the Book of Enoch depict him as a leader of fallen angels, introducing a narrative that would heavily influence Christian thought. As we continue our journey through history to the New Testament era, the character of Satan takes on a new level of prominence and individuality. No longer just an adversary, he becomes a central figure in the narrative of Christian theology. Satan is now cast as the tempter in the wilderness, challenging Jesus himself. This confrontation is a pivotal moment, symbolizing the clash between divine purity and the lure of worldly power. But it's not just about temptation. The New Testament also casts Satan as a rebel, a once-favored angel who fell from grace due to pride. This fall from heaven marks a significant shift, from a functional role within a divine order to a personal embodiment of opposition to God. And with this fall, Satan assumes a new title, the ruler of demons, overseeing a kingdom of malice in stark contrast to the kingdom of heaven. Here begins the dualistic battle that will dominate Western religious thought. Furthermore, the New Testament imbues Satan with a host of symbolic meanings. He's the deceiver, the father of lies, and the personification of sin. This is where the seeds are sown for the medieval portrayal of Satan as the ruler of hell, a concept that Dante and Milton would famously expand upon. Yet, it's important to note that during this time, the imagery and attributes of Satan are still forming. They are influenced by a mosaic of folk beliefs, theological disputes, and the nascent church's struggle to define orthodoxy. This period is crucial because it sets the stage for the medieval and renaissance periods, where artists and theologians alike would craft a more terrifying and elaborate image of Satan, one that endures in the popular imagination to this day. With the dawning of the medieval era, we witness yet another profound transformation in the perception of Satan. No longer just a shadowy spiritual adversary, he becomes a vividly depicted terror in the collective imagination. This is the time when Satan begins to acquire the physical traits that many recognize today. Artists and theologians paint him with horns, hooves, and a leering visage. This iconography borrows from earlier pagan deities and adversaries, repurposed to embody Christian evil. But why this change? The medieval church was consolidating its power, and the depiction of a fearsome Satan served as a deterrent against sin. He was a tangible threat in the everyday struggle between good and evil, a personification of all that was to be resisted by the faithful. The concept of hell also becomes more elaborate during this period. It's no longer just a state of separation from God, but a physical place of punishment, with Satan as its overlord. This hell is vividly portrayed in Dante's Inferno, where the poet imagines Satan trapped at the very center of the earth, frozen in ice. Yet it's not all fear and damnation. The medieval period also sees Satan becoming a subject of satire and even comedy, 
reflecting the human need to mock that which frightens us. In festivals like the Feast of Fools, the devil becomes a caricature, part of a world turned upside down. This duality of Satan, both feared and mocked, speaks to the complex role he played in medieval society. He was a tool for moral instruction, a symbol of the chaos and disorder that reigned beyond the church's doors, and a reminder of the eternal stakes of the human soul. As we step into the Renaissance and beyond, literature becomes the forge upon which the image of Satan is hammered and reshaped. Two works in particular cast long shadows over our cultural understanding of this figure, Dante's Inferno and Milton's Paradise Lost. Dante Alighieri's Inferno, part of his larger work, The Divine Comedy, presents us with a Satan who is monstrous and grotesque, trapped in a frozen lake at hell's deepest circle. This portrayal reflects the era's religious doctrines, yes, but also its philosophical inquiries into the nature of sin and punishment. Dante's Satan is a tragic figure, one who embodies the ultimate futility and self-inflicted torment of rebellion against the divine order. His three faces, eternally devouring traitors, are a symbol of his own corruption and the perversion of the Holy Trinity. Fast forward to the 17th century, and John Milton gives us a very different Satan in Paradise Lost. Here he is not just a villain, he's a complex character with motives, a voice, and even a certain dark charisma. Paradise Lost gives us the famous line, better to reign in hell than serve in heaven, encapsulating the rebellious spirit that would come to be associated with Satan. Milton Satan is a fallen hero of sorts, embodying the human struggle for autonomy and self-determination. These literary depictions have seeped into our collective consciousness, coloring all subsequent interpretations of Satan. They've shaped the way we grapple with themes of authority, freedom, and the problem of evil. And it's not just about the historical Satan anymore. The character has become a symbol for our inner struggles, our defiance, and our capacity for self-destruction. Literature has transformed Satan from a theological concept into a mirror reflecting aspects of our own humanity. As we navigate through the modern era, the figure of Satan continues to evolve, now transcending religious texts to become a versatile symbol in popular culture, literature, and even political discourse. Today, Satan is often portrayed with a mixture of fear, fascination, and sometimes humor. He appears as a character in movies and television, sometimes as the embodiment of evil, but increasingly as a complex, almost relatable figure, complete with motivations and a backstory. In literature, Satan's character has been reinterpreted as an anti-hero, a tragic figure, or even a metaphor for human rebellion and the pursuit of knowledge. This multifaceted depiction reflects our own society's complex relationship with morality and virtue. But it's not just in stories where Satan finds a home. In philosophical and political arguments, references to Satan or Satanic often serve as powerful metaphors for corruption, manipulation, or the struggle against authoritarianism. Moreover, Satan has become a symbol for individualism and rebellion in certain subcultures. This is evident in music, fashion, and even in the rise of movements like modern Satanism, which typically uses the symbol of Satan not to promote evil, but to advocate for freedom and critical thinking. This brings us to an intriguing paradox of the modern age. Satan, once the ultimate adversary of humankind, is now invoked by many as a figure representing the fight against tyranny, the championing of personal liberty, and the questioning of absolute truths. Let's take a moment to reflect on the remarkable journey we've embarked upon today. We've traced the evolution of one of history's most enigmatic figures. From an ancient accuser nestled in the pages of sacred texts, through the complex tapestry of theological, cultural, and literary transformations. In the beginning, we saw Satan in the role of the heavenly prosecutor, a far cry from the embodiment of evil that would later emerge. This was a figure rooted in the divine order, serving as a foil to humanity's protagonists. Fast forward and we find a figure who's taken on a more personal and rebellious character in the New Testament, challenging Christ himself and beginning his descent into the Prince of Darkness. In the medieval canvas, this figure becomes a visual spectacle, adorned with horns and cast into the fiery pits of hell, a symbol to incite fear and moral adherence amidst the flickering candlelight of Gothic cathedrals. The quill of poets and philosophers like Dante and Milton added depth and complexity to Satan, endowing him with tragic grandeur and a rebellious spirit that challenges the very notion of authority and subservience. And in our present day, Satan has transcended the boundaries of religious iconography to become a multifaceted symbol within our cultural lexicon, from film to literature to political satire. 
He represents the human conditions of temptation, rebellion, and the pursuit of forbidden knowledge. This voyage through time reveals the power of myth and narrative to adapt and mirror the ever-changing human condition. It illustrates our collective need to personify our deepest fears, our struggles, and our innate desire for liberation. So, as we conclude our exploration, we're left with a figure that is not static, but dynamic. Not merely evil incarnate, but a character as complex and contradictory as humanity itself. Before we wrap up, I want to ask you to join our community by hitting the subscribe button. It helps support our channel and ensures you don't miss out on our future explorations. And now for that little known fact I promised. Did you know that the image of Satan with goat-like features likely originated from the pagan god Pan, who was demonized by early Christians? It's a reminder that our interpretation of figures like Satan is often a reflection of broader cultural and religious shifts. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.